Thanks, Hardiel. Thank you, Emma. Thank you, Emma and uh, Emily Bransford for um, and Royal Action Derbyshire for organising this and launching on this, as Emma said, on International Women's Day 2021, this important film, which has been premiered here today, about domestic abuse in rural communities. And I'm really pleased, as the Police and Crime Commissioner for Derbyshire, who has said that he will fight crime and protect vulnerable communities in all our parts of Derbyshire, urban, suburban, and rural. And so on this occasion, one of the things I have been really interested in is how we can actually raise awareness about domestic abuse in our rural communities. Because certainly from my work as a probation officer and manager for 30 years, and being a police and crime commissioner and deputy police and crime commissioner, my assumption was and is that domestic abuse happens everywhere. Every part of the uh, society and every corner, of the urban, suburban, rural parts. And often these issues are highlighted for more in urban areas. And the work I did through um, being a member of the Rural Crime, uh, uh, rural crime Network, National Network, we did a survey about domestic abuse in rural communities. And I had a specific focus on an additional detailed work for Derbyshire. And that concluded that domestic abuse certainly is everywhere. And we need to actually increase the trust, confidence, and um, uh, for victims of domestic abuse in rural communities to come forward and not suffer in silence. And so I was really pleased to work in partnership with Rural Action Derbyshire to set up the Willow Project, which is my pleasure to be here with you today to sort of demonstrate the work that hopefully will be happening and has already happened because the film today is a great example of trying to get the message out there and raise awareness about domestic abuse. And I'm pleased to say that working and talking to Emily only last week and when we did a pod, uh, uh, for, for this message. The work that Emily and Rural Action Derbyshire have done through the Willow Project has already raised the awareness, the understanding, and with the community champions they are enlisting to see how we can reach out into the communities, into our village halls, into our farming communities, into every part of rural society in Derbyshire to make sure that people know what they can do, they're aware about what domestic abuse is, they're aware about how they can safely and in confidence get help and not suffer in silence. So I'm really pleased the way that the Willow Project has been um, mobilized. And in the next year or so, I'm hoping that not only will we, will we raise the profile of domestic abuse and make sure that nobody is suffering in silence, we can also understand what has worked, what hasn't worked. And I know Emily and Emma and the Rural Action Team, the Rural Action Derbyshire will be working with my, myself and my office to capture the evidence of what works and what more we can do to ensure that victims of domestic abuse in our rural communities get the same help as any other victim of domestic abuse in any other part of uh, Derbyshire and that the domestic abuse victim support services, which are available in the county, co-commissioned by myself and the county council, can be accessed, can be used to, be, to support and be on the side of victims of domestic abuse. So I'm really pleased to be here today. I'm really pleased to share my thoughts and I want to congratulate Rural Action Derbyshire and the Willow Project on a flying start in terms of doing this work for the people of Derbyshire. So thank you very much, Emma and Emily, and I um, uh, would look, uh, look forward to other speakers and uh, uh, the rest of the event today. Lovely, thank you very much, Hardiel. Um, and now I'd like to introduce Bev Parker, our CEO. If she can find the unmute button. Bev, you're still muted. 
There you go. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And that was one of those times. Thank you, Hardy. I wasn't counting how many times you mentioned Rural Action Derbyshire, but thanks for the plug. It was very great. It was great. Um, I just want to say a few words, really, um, and, and echo Hardyl for his kind words. I mean, thank you for joining us today for this launch on International Women's Day. Whilst we recognise that not all abusers um, are men, we know that the majority of victims are women. The inspiration for setting up the Willow Project came from the first-hand stories of women that I'd met who had experienced coercive and controlling relationships. Women from rural areas, um, some involved in farming, and all of whom had found it extremely difficult to talk about their issues and to, to seek help. I'm grateful to those women for opening my eyes to the lengths that some people will go to in controlling and coercive relationships. I heard from women who'd been tracked by their partners um, from devices in their cars. Apparently, these are easy to find and buy on the internet. Who knew? I heard from professionals working in rural communities of women who were prevented um, from having their own bank account or their own mobile phone and whose every move was supervised and scrutinized. Then I came across the national report, Captive and Controlled, uh, which uh, was produced by the National Rural Crime Team. And I realized that these were not just isolated incidences and that there was a very real issue hidden away in our dispersed rural communities. And even that some perpetrators would deliberately move to rural areas so that they can exert even greater control over their victims. I use the words perpetrator and victim deliberately because I believe that this kind of behavior is just as frightening and damaging as physical violence. I can't imagine what it must be like to be living like this and how alone and helpless people in such a position will be feeling. I decided that Rural Action Derbyshire should, should try and do something to raise awareness of this issue. And so I approached the Office of the Police and Crime Commissioner for Derbyshire. And I was delighted that they were keen to support a new project. And so the Willow Project came into being. I'd like to formally thank Harjal Dinsa and his team, particularly Dawn Robinson and Sarah Greensmith, for their wholehearted and practical support and of course the funding to get the Willow Project off the ground. None of this would have been possible without their support, so thank you, it's very much appreciated. Starting a new project during lockdown is incredibly difficult, so I'd also like to thank Emily Brailsford for being unstoppable and carrying on regardless of the pandemic, and also to Rural Media for their creativity and sheer talent to produce this stunning film in such difficult circumstances. We all know someone like the Dawn in the film, but instead of turning a blind eye, we must be supportive. We must offer our unconditional help, and then we must challenge attitudes. It's not so easy to walk away when your confidence has been stripped bare, and there are always ties such as children, animals, or perhaps the home that you're tied to. We must first understand and support, but then not be afraid to challenge. Thank you. Thank you, Bev. Um, before we just move on to Nick, I just want to say there will be the opportunity to either ask questions or comment um, some discussion once uh, everybody's finished their bit. So, you know, do stay on and um, have a chat with us afterwards. So now I'd like to introduce Nick Millington, the Chief Executive Officer of Rural Media, who, as Bev said, uh, were able to make this brilliant film um, during the pandemic. So, uh, Nick, over to you. Okay. Um, hello. Uh, afternoon to everyone. Uh, it's fantastic to see um, so many people, um, you know, gathering around the table around both this issue and uh, and see the film. Um, Rural Media uh, is a charity. Uh, we're based in Hereford. Um, um, I founded it, oh gosh, awful long time ago, 28 years ago or something, I think. Um, and uh, uh, in many ways, the, the purpose of setting Rural Media up uh, is, has not changed and the mission is still, uh, is still um, the same. And that's really two, twofold. One is to uh, try and uh, 
give a broader representation of um, uh, life in a rural area and, and so on. I'm sort of still so surprised at how our national media, that's both film, TV, uh, um, mainstream media, newspaper and so on, really have a relatively narrow, we uh, represent rural areas in a relatively narrow way. Um, and uh, uh, we, all of us know, I've lived and worked in small rural communities in uh, the rural West Midlands for most of my working life. And uh, we know that there are many, many issues um, uh, that are important to address, uh, difficult in many ways, uh, sometimes absolutely uh, celebratory as well. And they don't really get um, the attention that they, they need from the wider, uh, wider public. Um, despite uh, uh, the uh, percentage of uh, uh, our country that is in fact uh, um, defined as rural. The, um, the second one of course is really about trying to give uh, people who are perhaps their lives and communities are not faring very well uh, the means of having a voice and communicating uh, more, uh, more effectively. Um, and uh, not so much in this particular film but in many of our projects we're also uh, looking at ways of um, enabling people to use uh, technology and uh, particularly now the incredible uh, potential for people to uh, develop the skills and the craft to tell their own stories. Um, and then working with partners um, uh, and public services and uh, voluntary organizations to ensure that that work gets seen. Um, and rural media over these years has also worked on the issues of domestic abuse um, uh, for many years. Um, we, um, we've worked with uh, Women's Aid and uh, with local organisations as well um, on a whole range of uh, aspects of domestic abuse, including the experience of children growing up in abusive families and um, of uh, teenage relationship abuse, abuse itself. And if you look at our website, um, some of that work is on there. Um, when, um, uh, when Rural Action Derbyshire approached us about this project, of course, um, we were um, delighted to explore the potential and to work, um, to work with the organisation. And it's been incredibly productive um, and uh, partnership, really, just exactly what one would hope. Um, we also... Uh, you know, we really embrace the, the idea that came from um, Rural Action Derbyshire of working uh, in drama, in scripted drama. Um, I think uh, scripted drama has a real role to play in um, a lot of communicating and impacting on communities uh, around challenging, difficult subjects. Um, of course, there's a role in fact, uh, for factual programming uh, and Rural Media itself does works in documentary as well. But sometimes um, you want to, uh, an audience to go away um, feeling something as well as understanding um, and having information and so on. And I think not only, um, not only in this, um, uh, in, in the context of community uh, audiences, uh, and I think this film and the way it's been structured would work really well in village hall uh, events and so on, Rural Media is also supporting a lot of uh, rural touring film circuits and a feature film and so on, and it's fantastic. This film and perhaps a short presentation afterwards uh, by a local um, expert or expertise would work so well in front of a major film, for instance. But I think also, um, I mean, I'm hoping that this film will get used in terms of professional development, in training, um, both of public service, uh, public services, police, of course, um, but also um, uh, public sector and the voluntary sector organisations. Again, my experience of, uh, of a lot of uh, training is uh, some very good content, some very good resources, but it is, um, you know, uh, factual information uh, as important as that is but sometimes again we need people to go away having identified with a character or a story and that um, that sort of uh, hangs with us stays with us for a long time so working in drama uh, um, on this project was um, was really fantastic now of course whenever the content gets made 
the important thing is it doesn't just sit on a shelf for um, you know uh, malinga there it then has to get used proactively um, and so we're continuing to work with um, Emma and Emily and Bev uh, to see how we might be able to get uh, this film um, more widely used and that includes trying to get some opportunities in broadcast. I have to say we had a conversation with Countryfile the other day but um, Countryfile were a little ambivalent perhaps, I mean the conversation is still going on but again this comes down to understanding the challenge of um, getting really important, vitally important messages um, across to uh, significant numbers of people um, using both narrow cast and main, uh, mainstream media. Um, please do, uh, very interested to hear responses to the film, not just now, but if, you know, uh, over the course of the next few weeks, I'd love to get some feedback. Lovely, thanks very much, Nick. Um, yes, and I, I second um, Nick's comments about feedback. Thanks to everybody that's commented so far in the chat about the film. Um, do get in touch with us um, if you've got any comments on the film itself or on anything else. Um, to do with the subject matter. So now I'm going to hand you over to the uh, safe hands of Emily Brailsford, who's the project lead for the Willow Project. Thank you, Emma. Um, well, I don't want this to sound like an Oscars speech, but um, I do want to say thank you very much to um, Rural Media for pro producing the film in the really hard circumstances of lockdown to Hardiel and the Office of the Police and Crime Commissioner, Hardiel's team who have been supportive and really guided me um, in this project, to all the other domestic abuse agencies in the consortium who have really welcomed me, although I am a bit of an outsider to domestic abuse, to, um, they've been really supportive. And finally to Bev and Emma who have um, just let me uh, run with it and, and put, put uh, pulled the reins when uh, necessary, but mostly let me lead on the project. <laughs> um, so one of the main aspects of coercion and control in rural areas is the small and tight knit communities, which mean that you really can't um, disclose abuse to anyone because you know everyone, you've grown up with them or they know, know your parents or your grandparents. So that's um, that's one of the main sort of differences about rural domestic abuse and coercion and control as opposed to urban. Um, to help deal with this problem, we are developing a team of champions who are there to challenge perceptions and um, change lives. If you think you'd like to become a champion with the rural pro uh, the Willow Project, please get in touch with us through the website or you can email me directly um, you can do as little as you want as a champion you can just change posters put posters up in your village hall or if you feel like it you could give them um, talks to other agencies but there's no pressure and then finally um, we're going to use the training uh, use the film sorry as part of our training for those who live in rural areas or work in the agricultural sector um, so it will help them spot signs of abuse and know who and where to refer to. Again, if you're interested in that, please get in touch. And finally, as Hardil mentioned, we are doing a monthly podcast um, looking at different aspects of abuse and speaking to those who work in um, the field of domestic abuse support and hopefully eventually we'll get to speak to some victims. And that will be able, uh, the podcast will be found on the website once a month. I think I've covered everything there, but thank you again for everyone's support. Thank you, Emily. Um, so we have had a couple of um, comments in the chat. I mean, some are obviously very pleasing comments about the film and how powerful it is. Um, but we've also had a couple of questions really. Uh, one was uh, from Amanda Warburton, which was um, if the project found anything specific around older people in rural areas experiencing domestic abuse. They're often much more isolated than the victim in the film with no contact with schools or community events. So Emily, um, have you got 
sort of anything you want to share on on the older people well the willow project doesn't work directly with victims we're there about uh, with we're here to raise awareness um so i can't that, that isn't anything i've come across but what i will do is take that comment back and work with the consortium of glow derbyshire wish the elm foundation and crossroads and um talk to them about that and how we can um uh, deal with that and help raise awareness with the older generation. Lovely, thank you. Um, so Hardyul and Bev have a question. Hardyul, would you like to go first? I think your hand was up first. Thank you. Uh, it's it's uh, not, not so much a question, but a response to that question that just came in. I mean, I think um, Vicky Bunnage is on the line representing Crossroads. And one of the things uh, that we have is that the domestic abuse network that supports uh, uh, victims of domestic abuse are available. And I think uh, they will work in partnership with the Willow Project. And I, in fact, I have spoken to Vicky, uh, who's, who maybe are to, maybe are to add a bit more, to raise the profile of domestic abuse and reach out, particularly in the Derbyshire Dales area, um, because Crossroads is one of the uh, members of the consortium covering the north, the west, northwest and the west part of the county. And uh, one of the things is about reaching out into and the, the question is really a great question. The elderly are as equally suffering from domestic abuse as any other group. And we need to find the right me mechanisms to get into that. And that will be one of the learning lessons of the Willow Project as well, how to reach it into those groups. And I think Vicky Bunnage and the network of domestic abuse mainstream providers is a question we can take to them for them to see how they can respond to that in terms of reaching into the uh, isolated elder members of our community in the rural, rural areas. Thank you, Hardy. Bev? Again, to follow on from um, <clears throat> from that that question, I think we are aware uh, nationally that older people there has been a, an increase in in, in an abuse um, am, amongst older people, and I, I totally agree that in rural communities it's probably even harder for those people to reach out to people who might help and understand. One of the in our original work plan for the Willows project, we envisaged Emily um, going off doing lots of talks to Women's Institute meetings, Mother's Union, um, etc. And we still plan to be able to do that once we can um, do that face to face. But in the short term, what we plan to do is to to make the film um, available. Um, to offer training places to um, other voluntary sector partners. Um, we're part of a, a, a countywide network of voluntary sector infrastructure agencies, and um, they are all very keen to, to find out more about this project um, so that they can uh, sort of pass on the, the messages um, to, to their volunteers um, who are working in the communities. And I think, you know, for reaching the older generation, that is probably our most powerful tool in terms of using our networks um, to educate and inform and bring people up to speed with, with the issue so that they can be alert to it when they're out, whether it's collecting prescriptions or whether it's um, doing, you know, taking meals um, or helping people in their homes. I think if more people are aware of the issue and are looking out for the signs, then we can make sure that uh, more people get the help that they need. So I think it's a really valid point uh, and a thank you to Amanda for raising it. Um, and uh, yeah, it's watch this space really, but I think if all of you can spread the word amongst your networks, that will help us too. Thank you. Thank you, Bev. Um, so has anybody else got anything specific they would like to ask or raise? Um, you could raise your hand using the button. Richard, Richard Walsh, you've got a question. Richard, you're on, you're still on mute. Oh, my apologies. Yeah, thanks so much, Emily. Uh, a couple of questions, really, and one suggestion, which perhaps might actually be very radical. A lot of the film uh, obviously covered the, the victim of abuse, but 
I don't know whether uh, Hardwell's department or anybody else can sort of suggest if any work has been done as to why this sort of behaviour in males, obviously, generally takes place. Is it something that they have seen through their parental fig, uh, you know, figures or father figures or something like that? Is there some reason for it? And perhaps some uh, work needs to be done there to try and uh, find out why this sort of behaviour takes place with a view to actually uh, stopping it. Uh, secondly, really following the point from uh, Nick made about the fact that they tried to get it on uh, country file and the response was somewhat ambivalent. Uh, in many ways, uh, that doesn't surprise me. Someone has been involved in trying to get stuff onto uh, television, nothing to do with this sort of thing, entirely different. Uh, these things are often seen as quite niche and uh, you might struggle, but this issue has actually been covered in the urban sense on Coronation Street, in that the you know, course of behaviour was covered very well there. And the suggestion I would make, and it's quite a radical one, and perhaps uh, us in RAD and uh, uh, Hardio's department might approach something like Emmerdale, the makers of Emmerdale, with a view to writing into the scripts uh, seen there to yeah. do with domestic abuse oh. in a rural community, because Emmerdale very much uh, is based upon a rural community in Yorkshire. And that, I think, if they would take it on board and actually do it, would be a tremendous way of raising awareness of the issue within the rural community and the setting where it takes place. Because most people tend to think of this taking place in urban areas, in cities and That's towns, and probably cool. aren't aware of the issue it does happen out in the sort of leafy areas and rural areas. So, you know, I don't know if anybody wants to take that forward. Yeah, thanks, can get um, Chris, to do it. I'd, I'd quite like Nick to comment on that last point and Bev to comment on your first point, and then we'll come to Hargill and to Abby. Yes. Um, uh, oops, no, no, I'm not on mute. Um, thanks so much, Richard. Yes, uh, you're absolutely right. I, I think, I mean, uh, some years ago, you can tell, some years ago, I... Um, I did a lot of work um, on uh, HIV and AIDS, and uh, there was um, in in uh, rural areas, and uh, there was a lot of very good resources then, and I was using some of those resources, but um, and particularly targeting um, younger people and younger adults, and uh, because of the urban setting and because of often um, you know um, northeastern accent or something. People were inclined to say, no, this isn't an issue. This isn't an issue in Shrewsbury or, you know, in Tamworth or something. And um, uh, it was really about the sense of place. Uh, uh, and I think all of these, addressing all of these uh, important issues, health issues, well-being, justice and so on, created, created in, in, reminding people, as you say, that this is actually also happening uh, in our rural towns and, and cities and villages as well. Um, but you have to really represent that uh, because otherwise we do have a dominant urban centered media and they do tend to, uh, most people carry around with them certain set ideas um, and uh, they're not to be blamed for that, but uh, it's quite a challenge um, overcoming it. So uh, thank you. And the suggestion for um, uh, influencing storylines on uh, mainstream soaps. I think it's a very, very good idea. Thanks, Nick. Bev, could you just address Richard's first comment about perpetrators' behaviour? Um, <clears throat> yes, I will do. I don't profess to be an expert at all, Richard, but I, it's something else that um, has occurred to us. I mean, a number of people who've seen the film already have said that, you know, oh, what happens next or, uh, or what happened before? Um, and I think we get a couple of kind of glimpses of, um, of, of uh, Peter's father in the film and, uh, and perhaps a suggestion there that, um, that Peter himself was a, um, grew up in an abusive household. And I think there's, there's, uh, there is definitely something um, as a next step. Uh, in fact, we've, we've kind of floated the idea of um, another project whereby we could perhaps work with some men and boys to look at writing um, either a prequel or a sequel to the to the to Dawn story, um, to explore male behaviours and uh, some of the issues that come around from that. That is really just a, a glint in our eye at the moment, but it's something that we've certainly thought about. 
I think there's um, th there, there are a number of, um, of other campaigns, I believe, and Hardy, I don't want to steal your thunder, but I think there is a, a new perpetrator programme starting in Derbyshire fairly, fairly soon. So I'll, I'll hand over to you to talk about that because I don't, much, don't know much of the detail. But I, I think there is something about um, rural communities in sp particular, which are you know, generally quite traditional, can be quite patriarchal. And I think there is something for us to, to start conversations, I think, um, with um, uh, men and boys in particular around some of those relationships. Um, and, uh, but that's kind of, you know, the next phase of the programme. Um, but thank you for raising it. Hardy, I'll hand over to you to talk about the perpetrator programme. Thank you, thank you, Beverly. Um, I think uh, Richard's qu questions and suggestions are really, really good. Um, so in terms of the uh, perpetrator program, we had a voluntary perpetrator program that the police, uh, uh, the local authority, the health service, myself as a police and crime commissioner, we have funded a program which can work with people who have not been convicted of domestic abuse, but are at the risk of, and there are instances of that happening. And so we, we certainly can give more information about that into the rural communities. Um, there are obviously, if somebody gets convicted on a community order, the probation service provide accredited program intervention with the support for the victim as well in, through um, uh, independent domestic um, 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 workers who can support them at the same time to work together on sorting the problems out. I do want to take up, I think the, the point about the film and uh, the sequels and prequels, I think that's a really good suggestion that we should do that. And maybe that even the film as it is, it gives something about what happens next, which may, you know, before, so what happens next? What would have, what would have happened in that situation when somebody is concerned, they, they see something, they become aware, what can they do? I think that might be something that uh, Emily and Beverly, you might want to pick, take up and pick up, pick up and sort of have a, even some, some words or statements, which uh, some great films have done there, and this happened 15 years later. Something like that at the, at the, uh, at the end of that. Nick uh, uh, from Rural Media, I'm sure, can make that facilitate that to happen in the meantime. So it sort of rounds off what the film is trying to actually convey, whether it's used in a training uh, situation or with or stand alone, at least gives a what, so what and what next? I think that's really important. And I certainly want to take up the idea of uh, Nick working with you to see how we can persuade uh, country fire to take this up, although they like to sort of look at country things yeah. and sort of uh, be more photogenic rather than uh, real issues that might make a difference. And so the, so, so the idea of uh, sort of trying to introduce storylines into programs like Emmerdale is another thing I really would be really happy to work with Okay. Everybody, anybody on this on this call to see how we can join up our forces to get that done. And so, uh, Don Robinson's on the line from my office, um, for the head of head of my commissioning team, who's been instrumental in making sure the work with the Willow Project and uh, the Royal Russian Derbyshire has made this land. And and of course, she's closely linked with all the domestic abuse support services. So, um, she comes up, comes on as eight three three eight four eight zero. Someone who might want to put your name in and sort of, uh, but we'll pick this up later on in terms of sort of following on some really great suggestions and maybe also picking up Richard's point, Emily, something at the beginning about saying something about the power dynamics which cause the abuse, and as we know, it's about paternal power. More, more than 90% of the time, there is other examples, and it's a use of power to control and coerce. And I think maybe sort of an introductory bit at the beginning to sort of make that clear could also give give that the before and after rounding off of, of, of the, of the excellent film that Nick Milgram and the Rural Media have put together. Thank you very much, Hardiel. Um, Abby, you did have your hand up earlier. Would you still like to speak? And then we'll go to Lee and then on to Valerie. Yeah, it was just a really quick comment um, about 
perpetrator programs and um, so that's something that we've set up recently in terms of the youth side of things obviously there's no clear cut answer to what causes people to go on to become domestic abusers but um something that we've been working on um is the cease program um and the the perpetrator side of that in terms of looking at that sort of entitlement um and potentially even misogyny those kind of things and looking at past experiences and and harboring a lot of anger and things like that um, but just in terms of that is what we're trying to get out into the whole of Derbyshire in terms of school age children and um, when those behaviours are starting to surface in family relationships, intimate relationships, you're starting to see those red flags and um, that is something that we're working on at the moment. Okay, lovely, thank you. Um, so Lee, do you, would you like to speak and then Valerie and then Dawn? Yeah, I just wanted to uh, come on very quickly and say, well done with the uh, video. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. Um, I personally like the way you ended it because for a lot of people that we come in contact with, I'm, I'm the CEO of a, an organisation that's based down in Worcestershire, but we operate right over the UK through our services. Um, and for a lot of people we speak to, that point of first time saying, no, I'm not doing this, no, i that's it. That, that's a really key point. And I love the fact that you ended it on that. Um, in terms of a couple of the other things that have sort of come up on the chat, um, my two colleagues that I do what we do with both worked in perpetrator programs. Uh, and I'm speaking on their behalf. They have no idea I'm saying this at the moment. But if you wanted to speak to them at all about any of the experiences that they've had with perpetrators, I'm sure they would be happy to, to speak to you. Josh. Uh, who deals with our sort of LGBT side of things in, in our organisations uh, is a qualified uh, male idva as well. So um, he'd be quite happy to, to talk to you if you wanted to. Um, and just a very quick one, the, the, the bit that was brought up, I think it was by Bev at the start about the use of technology. Uh, surprisingly, one of the things that shocked me the most when I came to work in this industry was that people don't actually have to spend an awful lot of money for the technology because if uh, they've got iPhones and the perpetrator's got an iPad, you can actually link the uh, victim's phone up to your iPad and see exactly where they're going all the time. So uh, technology is massively used, but, but well done. Well done with this, uh, with the video and the project. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you, Lee. That's very good. Um, so we, we don't have too much time left now. So um, Valerie, if you'd like to say your bit and then we'll move on to Dawn. Thanks, Emma. Um, just, just two things. One, I think one of the strengths of Rural Action Derbyshire and the team we've got here is that um, you do raise issues that get overlooked. You know, people have such false ideas of what goes on in the country and uh, you know programs like escape to the country and uh, you know I think by highlighting these things you, you get a reality check uh, on, on what really goes on and what deprivation and abuse etc so so thank you for that but uh, Richard's excellent idea about Emmerdale I wonder what we can learn from the Archer's storyline a few years ago when Helen Archer was abused by her husband Rob Titchener which had massive publicity uh, I know Archer's is more niche than than Emmerdale but it did go beyond the kind of classic radio for audience and and you know there was coverage on news programs there was coverage in newspapers and uh, so whether we could learn anything from how that was taken up by the Archer's and uh, the impact it had in terms of trying to get it into other media outlets. I'm sorry I have to go now, but um, excellent, a, a very good film and a very good discussion and lots of great ideas for you to take up. Thank you. Valerie, yes, I remember that piece with the arches. It brought up gaslighting for the first time, as far yeah. as I was aware, which um, yeah. was, was interesting. Yes, it was a very difficult, uh, program to listen to at the time yeah so, uh, okay lovely thanks very much Valerie um so Dawn or should we call you 833480 <laughs> my absolute apologies for that I can't use zoom in the police's um, system so I'm having to use a personal phone at home and it won't show me any tabs or any questions <laughs> 
is there any way of changing my name or anything so I've only just managed to get on the call at the back end of it so I just wanted to pick up on Hardil's point that we are here to support the whole growth of this project domestic abuse is very precious to me it's something I've been doing for about 30 years in terms of working to prevent it we're trying um to extend our reach as far as we can into rural communities we're happy to develop any add-ons to the project as we've been doing with Willow I can talk forever about the causes of domestic abuse and why it's perpetrated in the first place that we haven't got time to do but what I wanted to say was anybody that wants to talk to me after today's session I'm happy to discuss that and how we can work with Beverly and Emily to progress with the work that we've started um, I feel like we go around in circles with domestic abuse we were doing this with um, the soap operas about 30 years ago and we seem to be coming back full circle I'm not sure that, whether that's a good thing or not um, but I just wanted to say I am here I have listened to the back end of the call but I'm afraid due to technology I've, I've struggled to interject until now <laughs> Lovely. Thanks. Well, we, as I've said, well, you wouldn't have seen it at the beginning. We're recording this. So if you did want to um, hear some of the earlier comments, Dawn, then that will be available to you. Um, so I think we're probably ready to wrap up now, unless anybody's got anything pressing that they would like to add. Um, now, there's not as many people left as I'd like, but I'm going to screenshot now. Um, I hope if I can get my technology to work. So uh, put on your best smiles or um, disappear if you don't want to be in it. Three, two, one, go. Thank you. Um, and oh, Alice, you just missed it. Um, and uh, so I've done the screenshot. Thank you to everybody. Thank you for watching the film. Thank you for coming along for the chat. Hardy, or thank you very much. I know you've got a very busy diary, so thank you for sparing the time. Um, and uh, and yes, we'll we'll see you again soon. Bye bye. Um, and I just wanted to say again about the training that is being rolled out now. If you would like to um, to take play, take part in the training, it's free thanks to our funding, um, to anybody in Derbyshire. It's, uh, it's a half a day Zoom training and you can either go on the champions training if you'd be interested in becoming a champion in your area, or we're also running a slightly different training, which is for people who um, we want to raise awareness of this, perhaps into the rural community through vets, agricultural merchants, hairdressers, lots of different groups and businesses um, to raise awareness. So if you'd like to come along to any of the training, please get in touch either with Emily or through the website. Um, now the film is obviously made and it's out there, but we are keen to sort of keep um, keep an eye on the film, where it's going. It's a difficult subject and and it's one that can affect people quite deeply, I think, if they've had personal experience or known somebody who's had personal experience of domestic abuse. So the films will not be publicly listed and publicly available on YouTube. But if you want to see it or ask somebody to, to watch it, um, then it is available through our website. Um, so you'd have to, to, to go to the page which says trailer and film can watch the trailer then you have to fill in a, a short form um, to say who you are to watch the film just so we can follow up and make sure that everybody that's watching the film is is okay about everything afterwards um, and it is a copyrighted film um, by Rural Action Derbyshire so it's not available to um, just be shown willy-nilly really or to take um, clips out of that um, but, you know, we're very keen to share the film. So if you do want to share it, then please get in touch with us. And I'm sure we can make arrangements to do that so you can share it with your groups. Um, so thanks, uh, Nick, for coming along and talking about rural media. And again, thanks for the great work um, that all of your team did to make such a wonderful film. Um, thanks to Emily and Bev talking about um, the project and the work. And um, thanks to everybody else who came along. So if there's nothing else, we'll uh, say bye-bye for now. Thanks, bye.